You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's seven of you on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods, Inks Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, excuse me, anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Hansen, and when would you say that was? The wolf gives the hyena a confused look. The prince, in response, simply observes Hansen calmly. I don't know. Evening? Eight or something. The hyena marks it in his book. And what happened after that? I got my toolkit and headed out. Started on the... Mr. Hansen, I must remind you as much detail as you can. The wolf huffs, annoyed. Leaning back, he shakes his head as if to rattle his memory. Ash. Ash? Yeah, there was ash in the air. Was there a fire? It was raining all night. I got to the house, started with replacing the lock like he asked. And the police tape? Replaced it, and the little sticker. The prince nods approvingly. And inside, the wolf lifts his paw to, stretch, to scratch his chest again. Fucking mess, like usual. No, what did you do inside? He shrugs. Got it through the back door. Closed the cellar hatch, took care of the body. Or what was left of it. Mr. Falks? No, the one in the kitchen. There was a corpse in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And what did you do with it? Wrapped it in a tarp and stuffed it in the freeze box. Head didn't fit, so I had to toss it in the fridge. And what species was this? Don't remember. The prince looks up, silently pressing him for details. Cat or something. I was laying naked up there, but most of the fur was gone. Can you recall the gender? It was hard to tell after whatever Georgie had done to it. Right, I see. And then? And these three... These three cunts arrived. Fucking pieces of shit. Hansen cuts himself off as the floor begins creaking once more. Two men descend the stairs, talking among themselves. Their white shirts almost glowing in the dark, and so do their badges. Hansen turns towards them, but not the prince. Upstairs clear, Mr. Prince, but we found blood. The hand raises his pen, eyes on his notes. Don't you knock? The weasel's thick tail slowly falls to the floor. Please, if you would be so kind as to wait upstairs. The two officers look at each other before shrugging and making their way back up, way back up the stairs. I do apologize. I specifically told them not to disturb. You brought the fucking pigs? The wolf growls in a low voice. Not to worry, Mr. Hansen. They have been informed of the situation. They're merely here to provide security. We want you feeling safe here. Are you fucking... The cigarette? The wolf looks down at the hyena's paw in confusion, holding a pack of smokes. Nevertheless, he grabs one. The prince holds out a silver lighter, the clink of the metal cover echoing through the room as the sparks ignite the flame. Three people arrived, you said. The wolf takes a long drag of the cigarette, exhaling heavily. After a second's pause, he nods. Yeah, three. Spotted them through the kitchen window. Thought they were cops. Police were called to the scene Thursday, but they were told to stay away until we brought you in. They weren't cops, but you can never be too careful, right? Hidden in wardrobe just by the entrance. You didn't leave. Didn't have, didn't have my meth yet. I see. Could you describe the three strangers? The wolf takes another drag of his smoke, flicking it to let the ash fall off to the side. Two short and one tall. Details, Mr. Hansen. The wolf leans forward, laying one arm on the table and scratching his head with the other. Tall one was a dog. Age? I don't know. It's hard to see in the dark. Probably mid-twenties. Dark clothes, cream fur. Green mask. Yeah, I think so. The prince's pen quickly moves across the page, murmuring under his breath. The giant. Then there was a rat, short, skinny, fat tail. The hyena stops again, looking back over his notes with a confused expression. Rat? Looked like a fucking rat to me. Said something about marsh... marts? Marsupial. The wolf points with his cigarette. Yeah, that. Blue mask? Yeah. Second, y'all. Water time. Alrighty, y'all, and we are back. Alright. Oop. The prince's writing continues. Last one had a pink mask. The rabbit. No. Raccoon. 
The hyena stops, slowly raising his eyes to the wolf before placing his notebook down at the table and folding his legs and leaning forward. For a split second, Hansen's eyes meet mine. Hmm. And I feel more exposed than I've ever felt in my life. My heart rate picks up, a new wave of anxiety washing over me, coursing through my veins. I quietly readjust myself, paw over my mouth, so that I can peek around the barrel. Pain shoots through my left shoulder all the way down my arm as I move. Are you certain? I was holding a gun against his skull at that point, and I know what a fucking rabbit smells like. Sure as fuck wasn't a rabbit. What did he look like? Like a raccoon, I guess. Any distinguishing features? Hanson's gaze drifts back towards me as he scratches his chin. Smelled like cinnamon. The hyena shakes his head. No, Mr. Hanson. The scars, piercings, eye color. Purple eyes. No, he couldn't have seen my eyes yesterday. And then, you let them go. <laughs> the wolf exhales a trail of smoke through the side of his muzzle, swaying his head in disagreement. No! Piece of shit tased me in the nuts and that fucking mud broke my nose. Woke up way after they left with this. His paw moves up to pull his shirt to the side, revealing the crew tattoo on his shaved chest. Fascinating. The hyena inspects the mark intently, running his delicate digits along the scars to which the wolf winces. They marked you. Mark, what do you mean they marked me? As Hansen raises his voice in concern, the hyena seems to snap out of his obsession. Calmly, he leans back in his chair, throwing one leg over the other as he adjusts his tie. His, paw brush it. his paws brush over his pants, looking deep in thought. Do you know where they went? The rat? No. Disappeared while I was knocked out. And the raccoon? The wolf takes a breath, eyes set on the hyena. No. The prince slowly nods. Well, Mr. Hansen, I believe our matter here is concluded. The prince places the notebook back in his bag and closes it. The wolf seems to let out a breath he'd been holding throughout the entire meeting. And so do I. The prince's eyes fall on the pen laying on the table. I lift one leg, getting into a crouching position, ready to make a run for it. Although, before we finish, there was one more detail I'd like to discuss. The hyena reaches out, picking the pen back up and clearing his throat. Have you heard the nickname they have given me, Mr. Hansen? His eyes return to the wolf, tilting his head as he gently presses the back of the pen, repeatedly retracting and extending the ball point. Hansen slowly leans back, taking one last drag of his nearly extinguished cigarette before tossing it aside. What? The Red Prince? The Prince smiles, chuckling. No. Hansen scratches the wounds on his chest, gaze drawn to the pen. Yeah, I heard of the other one. And what is it they say? I heard they call you the Blackmail Butcher. That's right. Now, would you say that's a fair name? Second hill, water time. I don't know. I don't know you. That is a fair point. However, we've been sitting here chatting for quite a while now. I lift my other leg, holding my arm to stop it from swinging. And based on our time together here tonight, Mr. Hansen, would you say it's an accurate description? I can see Hansen's ragged shoes shuffle along the wooden planks below his chair. No? No. I thought not. Misguided in their effort, that journalist seems oblivious to the fact that they have wrongly named me and my colleagues all as the same man. But even the most simplest of deductions would conclude that this is the work of many, wouldn't you say? Even so, to identify us with such an undignified title truly does a great disservice to the operation at hand, even if one of my colleagues seems to have taken a liking to the name. Hansen simply listens, his paw paws on his thighs. Consider instead, if you would, the nature of these three men you had the misfortune of meeting last night. Now, I use the phrase men rather misleadingly. Animals would perhaps be a more suitable description, don't you think? Ferals? Granted, they may have managed to stay out of the public's eye, one must give them that, but to break into Mr. Falk's private home only to savagely rob him of his life, and not only that, but then to return to the scene of the crime to further deprive the deceased of dignity, 
stalking around in the night dressed as some lawless vigilantes for a cause they know nothing of. Mr. Hansen, what actions such as that constitute the title of Butcher? I guess. And such savagery by the same logic would then need to be stopped at any cost. No? Yeah? And you understand, of course, that any information that would lead to the capture of these beasts is of the utmost importance to us. Yes. And you're aware that any such information, even if previously withheld, would not be met with disciplinary action, but with handsome compensation. The wolf's eyes meet mine again, but this time they don't look away. Yes. The prince nods. I see. He clears his throat and the wolf's eyes draw away from mine, facing the hyena. Miller. As the weasel and his partner make their way back down the stairs, the prince turns, nodding to them. I'm sorry about your daughter, Mr. Hansen. What? They circle the table on either side, each grabbing one of Hansen's arms. Wait, 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 what the fuck is this? And pull him up out of his seat. The prince casually grabs his bag off the table and places it next to his chair as the two police officers push the wolf down on it. He kicks his legs, tugging against their grip. You leave my fucking daughter out of this, you hear? The prince adjusts his tie, standing up. Uh, well then, Mr. Hansen, I thank you for your time. He slowly strolls around the table. Your information tonight has been truly invaluable. And stops above the wolf's head. Unfortunately, you've shown me you're not willing to live for this cause. What the fuck are you talking about? So instead, you will die for it. He gently strokes the pen between his fingers. No! No, wait! I can be useful! I know where the raccoon is! And so do I, but unfortunately right now you're more valuable to us dead than alive. He grabs the wolf scout, pressing it hard against the table. He's here! He's here right now! They're gonna kill him. Bending down over him, he lined the thin ballpoint pin up with Hansen's eye. Mr. Hansen, do you know the greatest flaw these beasts possess? Wait, please, please, I can do more, please! It is their inability to separate empathy from ambition. Please, no, help! One second now, water time. While we listen to the rack, while we listen to the hyena gouge the wolf's eyes out. His pleading turns to screams as the needle slowly pierces the side of his eye. Blood runs freely down his face, pulling on the table. I can't watch this. I press my back against the barrel, biting my lip. Wait! The screaming stops, replaced by heavy panting and pained whines. I feel my heart pound in my throat, the adrenaline once again making my wrist tingle. Oh god, this is a terrible idea. Raccoon! Fucking help me! The prince slowly leans back up, a small smile stretching across his muzzle. Ah, there you are. How good of you to finally join us. Why don't you come on out? There's so much for us to discuss. The screaming and rustling starts back up. No! 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 Please! Wait! And then everything goes quiet. Riot. I peek around the barrel, clutching the piece of mirror in my paw hard enough to feel it cut my skin. Fuck! The hyena leans back, running a paw through his hair. He closes his eyes with a sigh before opening them, smiling around the room. The two cops let go of the wolf's arms, both reaching for their belt. Pull your guns and I'll kill you! I shout with a strained voice and a shaky breath. Now, now, why don't we all just calm down for a moment? He gestures with his paws for the weasel and his colleague to stand down. There's no need for violence here tonight. Violence? You just killed him! The prince steps closer, head slowly looking from side to side. Yes, an unfortunate turn of events. His daughter will mourn him, but in time come to appreciate his sacrifice. It seems we both have blood on our hands now. Don't we, Riot? I don't know what you're talking about! But of course I do. I lift my leg towards my chest, readying myself to run. Really now? Tell me, Miller. What was it you found in Mr. Fox's basement again? He waits patiently with his paws behind his back, turning to the weasel. Claws, Mr. Prince! 
that's correct. Raccoon claws, if I'm not mistaken. I looked down at my paw. You killed him, didn't you, Riot? But Mr. Falk took a piece of you with him. Much like our last encounter, you didn't make it out unscathed. We all turn to the window, just before a black can comes flying through the smashed glass. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.